Okay. Good morning to everyone. My name is Chiara Albertazzi. I'm the program manager of Zephyr Helicopter, a new two-seater turboshaft engine helicopter designed and manufactured by the Italian company Curti. I would like also to thank IASA for the opportunity to uh, have this speech uh, during this uh, symposium uh, to uh, present our um, innovative uh, uh, safety system, a ballistic parachute for a helicopter. Okay, during my presentation, I um, will try to answer to some questions about the company, about the program, uh, and about, uh, especially about the parachute system. Uh, Curti is a family-run uh, company, um, counting uh, about uh, 420 employees. Uh, nowadays, uh, it's a group composed by uh, nine subsidiaries and uh, a U.S. operating branch. And uh, the um, group turnover was last year about 130 million. Uh, Zephyr helicopter is the first helicopter in the world with, uh, designed since the beginning with an innovative ballistic parachute system. Uh, the parachute is part of the basic configuration of Zephyr, so it, in the, it can be activated by the pilot or by the passenger to rescue the crew under specific flight conditions. Now I would like to present you um, a video uh, that was specifically created uh, for this uh, symposium, uh, explaining better what we had in mind. <laughs> Zephyr is a two-seater turboshaft helicopter designed and produced by the Aerospace Division of Curdy, an Italian company with experience in the manufacture of components and automated machines for a variety of industrial applications, including complex parts for certified helicopters. With its turboshaft engine, innovative technological solutions, and a particular attention to safety standards, the Rotocraft has such cutting-edge features in its market segment that it is one of the projects to have been selected for the European Horizon 2020 program, dedicated to research and innovation. Zephyr travels at a cruising speed of 87 knots and can reach a maximum speed of 100 knots. It has a power of 105 kilowatts it can fly at an altitude above 15,500 feet. The Zephyr project was conceived by myself and my team, who have together managed in no time to develop a vehicle which we believe is really one of a kind. Ever since I was a child, I have always had a passion for airplanes. I started with building models, then I went to flight school and earned my pilot's license for fixed-wing aircraft. Then my company worked for Augusta Westland, Leonardo. I've always been particularly interested in all kinds of technology, in mechanics and in related fields, which are all typical of the Romagna region of Italy, where everything that moves, powered by an engine, is considered of enormous value. We live in the Emilia-Romagna region, which has a lot of creative spirit in the sphere of car and motorcycle engines. The company's history represents a kind of Darwinian evolution when it comes to learning how to make sophisticated components for the aeronautical industry. We've been working in aeronautics for 40 years. We have taken up the challenge and have the ambitious goal of acquiring a significant market share. To achieve this, we need to stand out. Designing the Zephyr from scratch took five years. A hundred people have taken part in the project in various ways, at various stages and in various roles, all adding their contribution. There are numerous young engineers among them, all Italians. Together with some major experts in the aerospace sector, they have helped to introduce innovation and refreshing design concepts. The helicopters I had been involved in were much larger, 
But this is an extremely serious, important prime quality experience too. I found the people extremely motivated, determined to get things done, achieve something and experiment. For this project, we have collaborated with major European businesses. Junkers, the parachute manufacturer, is one of them. It's a huge innovation on the world market, the first time a ballistic parachute has been used on a helicopter. I've been concerned with coordinating the work group. It's a project that has several innovative features for the market sector involved. We're talking about the turbine driving, the ballistic parachute from the safety standpoint, and the fact that the whole design has been completed in accordance with the CS27 standards for certified helicopters up to a maximum takeoff weight of 3,100 kilograms. This has enabled us to offer the small-sized helicopters sector various features that, in terms of safety, only normally belonged to the larger size choppers. Among the various benches that we made, the ERB, Energy Recovery Bench, MRB, Main Rotor Bench, and TRB, Tail Rotor Bench, are particularly important and complex. The first is used to test the whole transmission, simulating the torque and power of the turbine both when it is started up and in continuous flight. This bench enables us to submit the whole transmission system of both the main and the tail rotors to mechanical and thermal stresses as realistically as possible. The second type of bench separately tests the main rotor and the tail rotor, applying loads derived from calculations and then from data recorded experimentally during the first flights. A subsequent test phase on the helicopter in flight checks and further confirms the findings emerging from the bench tests, integrating them with the data recorded by accelerometers and extensometers in real flight conditions. This provides data on the life of the single components that are as accurate as possible, enabling to dispel all imaginable doubts concerning the safety of the rotorcraft. Like all the other components installed on the Zephyr, the ballistic parachute was also carefully tested. This was the world's first ever experiment of this type in the history of aviation. The test was conducted in Italy at the Oristano Fenso Airport in Sardinia in June 2018. It was a huge success. The very first time the engineers and all of the international aeronautical community could verify the effectiveness of such an innovative and revolutionary solution. The parachute is installed above the main rotor and it is intended as an additional safety feature in all those conditions where it is impossible to rely on auto rotation. As in the case of a flight control failure or loss of maneuverability and in all those situations where a rotor's turning speed cannot be restored. In the first phase of the test, we conducted the aerodynamic tests on the box containing the parachute at speeds up to 1.1 times the never exceed speed. Then we tested the opening of the parachute, first on a stationary platform, then moving at 60 kilometers per hour to check the overall interaction of the parachute and the box with the airflow during the opening phase. During the in-flight test, the helicopter was loaded with ballast to simulate the weight of two crew members and then it took off, remote controlled from the ground and taken up to an altitude of a thousand feet and flown at a speed of 30 knots. The engine was then deliberately turned off to simulate a failure and the ballistic parachute was deployed. It opened completely within six seconds. This time interval coincides with a drop of 450 feet in height which is also the minimum elevation needed to completely open the parachute and ensure a constant rate of descent and a safe landing. During the fall, which happened with a horizontal wind of 18.5 knots, the rate of the helicopter's vertical descent with the parachute completely unfolded, settled at around 14.5 knots. In practice, this is comparable with the speed of a human parachutist during its landing. Although the horizontal velocity component was larger than the vertical one, the impact with the ground caused deceleration peaks well below those required by the standards for safeguarding a person's life, as used in the crash tests by the aeronautical and automobile industries. This is because the systems installed on the Zephyr have been designed explicitly to save the life of the crew, irrespective of any damage to the cell. The system is designed to be effective even at the maximum forward speed because there is an innovative brake that quickly stops the rotors in the event of an engine failure. 
This means the helicopter passes very quickly from a forward flight to a vertical drop, while preventing the effect of the blade's rotation from having any negative influence on the parachute opening rate. With the aid of this brake, the helicopter lands with the engine and rotor at a complete standstill, thus avoiding any hazardous situations for the crew and anything in the area around the spot where the helicopter lands. Of course, in the event of a problem, it is always advisable to proceed in auto rotation if possible. But if this can't be done, due to a pilot error, a pilot falling ill, a failure of the controls, or any other situation that might prevent the rotor RPM from returning to the green part of the dial to complete the final flare for landing correctly, then the ballistic parachute is a further way to protect the lives of the crew and bringing them safely down to the ground. Curti has made an extraordinary effort in what is a strategic sector for Italy, mobility, bringing real innovation specifically to the two-seater helicopter segment, which has changed very little since the 1960s. We are very proud of what we have achieved. The helicopter has numerous possible uses. In addition to private travel, it has in all the applications we are talking about, the Zephyr is acknowledged as having the great advantage of operating costs that are roughly five times lower than the cost of other turbine-powered helicopters used for such activities. The four test pilots' opinions were very positive, but what makes us particularly happy is to see private users, instructors and journalists who fly the Zephyr and come back to the ground raving about the work we have done here. This vehicle gave me a real thrill, first and foremost because it is exuberant, powerful and makes you want to fly. We discovered it gradually, never underestimating the importance of the safety element. We discovered it one knot at a time, and with each knot we could tell that it wanted to be flown more and more. Okay, thank you. So, um, uh, in starting a, a new design uh, of a new small uh, helicopter, a two-seater, uh, we uh, tried to understand which was the safety situation, analyzing the safety data that were available. And uh, nowadays, we have very similar data than the ones at the beginning of the project. And uh, over the decades, we could find that uh, uh, about 57% uh, uh, of accidents and incidents uh, in EASA country involved uh, helicopters uh, performing non-commercial operations. And one half of them uh, is, uh, uh, happened during training flights or uh, pleasure flights. Uh, the 89%, as mentioned before, uh, of accidents and serious incidents involved the CS-27 helicopter. So we can say uh, really relatively small helicopters and uh, mostly operated by non-professional. Um, analyzing even deeply, uh, even deep in more detail the data, uh, we can see that uh, um, many factors um, are, in, are uh, related to human uh, factors and performances. A similar situation we can find in the US, where uh, um, uh, there was a um, journalistic investigation made by the uh, Los Angeles Times in 2018, uh, showing uh, um, a data uh, um, t taken from uh, FAA and uh, NS NTSB. Uh, and uh, um, in this case, it was analyzed the death rate, uh, uh, so um, fatal accidents, uh, uh, 100,000 hours of flight uh, and again uh, we can find that the um, worst death rate uh, belongs to small helicopters mainly not because they are they are not safe technically but uh, because they are uh, used in uh, general aviation so in designing a new uh, helicopter entering into uh, the same segment uh, we uh, try to imagine and think something new, something innovative that uh, could really help uh, these pilots uh, to um, recover in case of uh, emergency where auto rotation is not possible or where uh, their limited experience or their limited training uh, could lead to a wrong maneuver. 
some detail about the parachute. I will be very short here. Uh, there is uh, an external covering composite and internally we can find uh, um, a bracket specifically designed to hold the parachute and the rocket. That is a ballistic equipment uh, for extracting the parachute very quickly. Uh, the brake line has a special technology to avoid the damage to the canopy. And uh, um, the uh, maneuver for uh, the activation of the system is very simple. Uh, the uh, pilot uh, um, uh, turns off the engine and operates a special lever positioned above his head and uh, located in the cabin. Um, with the lever, uh, an automatic uh, sequence starts uh, and uh, uh, so breaking the rotors and deploying the parachute. And then we have a, a limited speed descent. Uh, all the pilots uh, who choose Zephyr are trained into this system and uh, uh, mm, all the pilots will be provided uh, with the information necessary to maximize the effectiveness of the device during an emergency. But even the co-pilot uh, can uh, be trained in the use of this device and uh, so it can be useful in case of pilot illness. When uh, it is possible to use the parachute, um, Zephyr has very good uh, auto rotation performances, but uh, there are situations where this maneuver is not possible, such as, but not limited to, um, flight control failure uh, or a loss of maneuverability, uh, flight conditions where uh, it's not possible to restore rotor speed, um, or flying over an area where uh, emergency landing cannot be performed safely, or pilot illness, as mentioned before. Now, just a couple of examples of real situations uh, with small helicopters where uh, a parachute could really have helped in uh, solving the situation. Uh, here we had a UK accident with, where the uh, main rotor blades separated from the rotor head. And uh, in this uh, circumstance, it's obvious it's not possible to perform auto rotation, and uh, the parachute could have helped. Another situation uh, was um, an emergency situation with a very high vibration level. Uh, the pilot reported that nothing in my train uh, prepared me. So he was not prepared to face this emergency. And uh, uh, the result was that he uh, lost the control of, um, uh, the, um, of the aircraft and uh, uh, the helicopter slammed towards a house, uh, killing one person and uh, um, creating major injuries in the pilot. This could have really been, uh, the damages could have been reduced uh, uh, very much in, uh, with the use of a parachute. Does it affect uh, helicopter performance? The answer is no. Uh, our flight test demonstrated that uh, the system uh, um, create no appreciable variation in the overall dynamic and aerodynamic uh, performances. Uh, so airspeed, uh, stability, handling qualities, uh, auto rotation, vibrations are more or less the same. That is why we included it in the basic configuration. Some basic data on the system. Uh, the minimum altitude for uh, activation is 150 meters. This was demonstrated during the test and it's a conservative data. Um, the deployment time uh, is uh, of uh, uh, five to six seconds, and then uh, we have a, a stabilized vertical speed of 7.5 meter per second. Uh, what we could observe after the landing was, well, is a minor damage to the helicopter, but uh, what uh, the system can really do is saving the life of the crew uh, by limiting decelerations uh, due to the impact. Why only Zephyr? We were asked uh, in uh, many occasions uh, if it was possible to apply a parachute system to other uh, small helicopters, but uh, it is very difficult to uh, integrate the system in a already designed helicopter. The parachute system is really uh, born together with the helicopter and it's fully integrated into it from the structural and aerodynamic point of view. Um, and then uh, the other factors that made uh, this application possible uh, uh, is the reduced weight of the helicopter and so the reduced dimension of the uh, parachute uh, and the availability of uh, ballistic systems and uh, huge investments in the project. Now the last uh, answer to the, to the last question, but is the, the most important, is it safe? 
um, uh, a safety system for an aircraft must have basically two uh, safety performances. The first one, uh, it must be it must not affect the safety of the aircraft when uh, it's not in use. And the second one is that it must be effective when it's needed. So with these two key points in mind, uh, we uh, conducted a ex extensive testing campaign uh, with uh, static testing, uh, dynamic uh, shooting testing, but also with structural fatigue testing on the structure. And finally, as you could see uh, in the video, uh, we performed also a real scale uh, flight uh, testing uh, on the system with a remotely piloted version of our helicopter. Um, we hope uh, with uh, this big uh, effort uh, to help uh, saving uh, some life uh, in the, these uh, areas. And uh, um, if it would be useful all, all, also only to save one life, we would be glad for the big effort uh, that we have faced and for the even bigger one that we probably will have to face to certify it. Thank you very much for your attention.